This is NewCap News with Brian Lentz. Good evening and thank you for joining us. We have an update on the man accused of second-degree murder in Lloydminster. 20-year-old Deshane Taden Bird made his first appearance via CCTV in a Lloydminster provincial courtroom today. He stands accused of second-degree murder for the death of Shane Victor Linus. Bird will reappear in court March 6th. Well, the countdown is on as the Liberal government gets ready to deliver the federal budget next Tuesday. Gerard Lampau finds out why egg producers are anxiously watching Ottawa. Yeah, I enjoy the challenges, enjoy the business aspect of it. Kagan Syret and his family have some 200 cows south of Lashburn. Both Kagan and his wife come from ranching backgrounds. He's also a partner with Myers Norris Penny in Lloydminster. He was speaking at Agrovisions on the tax changes being made by the federal government. The Liberal government uh, proposed some very wide-sweeping wholesale changes on July 18th of 2017. Um, really that we're going to impact three key areas, uh, uh, splitting income, accessing uh, the capital gains exemption and uh, capital gains and also passive income. Producer groups pushed back, but some of the measures have stuck, which will target income splitting. This could affect farm families with passive minority shareholders. The other thing that hasn't been legislated yet, that, but, but uh, will probably come out in the budget here on February 27th, some more details, is uh, punitive tax rates on passive income, which will certainly impact uh, farmers that have excess cash or investments in a corporation. Farmers who are renting out their land could see some changes in how that's taxed. Taxpayers, including ag producers, are nervously waiting on what changes could come down on passive income. What the legislation has done in any event is place the onus of proof on the taxpayer to prove that they are in fact involved enough to receive an appropriate allocation. One of the thresholds is 20 hours a week continuously and actively involved in the business. With eyes set on budget day next week, producers will have to be meticulous when recording all their hours of work including the unpredictable calving season. And we need to let our government know uh, what we think is fair and appropriate and, uh, and we need to do our best to keep small business, which largely drives this economy, uh, vibrant and alive and well. Gerard Lampau, Newcap News. And Lloydminster City Council met as a committee today discussing potential changes to bylaws, progress on several city projects and marijuana legalization. Josh Ryan has the details from City Hall. Members of the Lloydminster Youth Council stopped by City Hall to express their thoughts and concerns regarding marijuana legalization. One request was to make laws around dispensaries consistent throughout the city. However, Mayor Gerald Albers is waiting on the Saskatchewan government to reveal their framework in order to avoid issues that could come from differences with Alberta. We do not want to draw them and release them only for the Alberta side and then in turn have the government of Saskatchewan regulations indicate that we have to go back and do a redraft. So it's so important that we wait till we have both sets of documents and information from the two respective governments. Preparation for the East Channel Rehabilitation Project is underway and administration is looking into consulting engineering firms for both design and construction. The channel, which is located east of 40th Ave and sees a large portion of the storm runoff to Neal Lake West, suffered severe erosion in 2017 and required protective measures. I think that the need to be able to call on <laughs> Uh, additional resources and work together with the limited resources we each have is critical and this uh, partnership agreement that's being proposed and being looked at by our EMO staff is critical to ensuring that people are looked after. And there's work being done on a draft of an agreement for a regional emergency preparedness partnership. This would increase collaboration between municipalities and give more well-rounded plans for emergency situations such as wildfires. Josh Ryan, New Cap News, City Hall. This is New Cap Weather. Welcome to it, everyone. Hope you have enjoyed the Family Day long weekend holiday. I hope you had a good one, too. A bit on the cold side, but we knew that going into it there. And temperatures have continued to ease off during the course of the day. We were at minus 
14 at midnight. We've sunk down to minus 20. That feels like minus 29, but the wind's northwest at 16 kilometers per hour. And generally during the course of the day, it's been light drifting snow or light flurry activity. And this is right across the region too. As we take a look at it here on the radar satellite, and you can see it there just streaming in from the northwest. As we check out now what's happening in the Lakelands, Cold Lake area, they're at minus 17, and that's recovering from minus 21 at about 10 o'clock this morning. Minus 19 is the mark at the moment in the Battlefords and area. And just checking back for them, they were at, what was it, minus, uh, yeah, minus 17 is where they were just at midnight. So you can see the real story during the course of this temperatures has have eased off and the winds have generally been out of the northwest and north at times. Minus 28 at Isla Cross and they've been stuck at that for the better part of the day too. Minus 17 is around Wainwright and stretching into the Lakeland region. Minus 13 in Edmonton. Minus 19 around Provost, Macklin and into the Battlefords. And minus 14 at St. Wahlberg. And just a quick look to the south. Minus 19 in Lethbridge. Minus 19 as well in Coronation. Minus 15 in Banff. And you compare that with minus 20 in Kinders and minus 18 around Moose Jaw and Regina. We'll bring more details. We're hoping for a little warm-up, and by warm-up, we mean a push to the minus single digits as the week goes forward. And two cats are looking for their forever home in this week's pet project. Flower is an affectionate girl, and Outlaw loves to play. Here's John from the SPCA. While spring may seem like a long way off, you can get an early start with Flower. This beautiful feline is blossoming with love. She just adores everyone she meets, whether of the human or feline variety. With a gentle nudge, Flower will let you know that she wants to curl up next to you for some pets and cuddles. And she'll show you just how much she appreciates the attention with a loud purr. Every day can feel like a beautiful spring day with Flower, so why not add a little bit of sunshine to your life and make Flower part of your family? Stop by the SPCA and meet her today. This strikingly handsome fellow is Outlaw, but don't let his name fool you. There is nothing mischievous about this feline. The only thing he's guilty of is giving you unconditional love. Outlaw is a rather talkative cat who loves to share tall tales of his adventures. Usually they include stories of when he played with a shoelace for an hour, or when he fell asleep on a scratching post one afternoon. But his personality makes him all the more interesting. This big cat is full of love. All he needs now is that special family to love him unconditionally. And in return, you'll have a best friend that will never leave your side. This is one outlaw you want to meet. So don't delay. Stop by the SPCA and meet Outlaw today. This is New Cap Sports. Recent success has the Lloyd Minster Junior A Bobcats knocking on the door of a higher placement in the AJHL North, but a pair of tough weekend games didn't go as planned. With six games left in the season, Lloyd Minster needed a big win against Camrose Monday. Lance Phillips has more. On November 25th, it was Camrose skating to a 2-1 overtime win, but Monday, a much more determined, skilled Bobcats team took the ice. It was as back a fourth a game as you could imagine, but in the end, the Kodiaks left Lloyd Minster with another overtime win, this time by a 4-3 score. We're, we're banged up, short-handed up front. We only have nine regular forwards in the lineup, and you know it, we just didn't play with an urgency, that extra jump that we usually play with. With the Bobcats, I think they worked really hard. Same thing that we saw back in Camerals. Um, they played a hard game again today, and I can see why they're moving up the rankings. I mean, they uh, played a 60-minute game. Much of the Bobcats' recent success can be attributed to their top line, a line that, while it accounted for just two points Friday and Saturday, came back to life Monday with four points and it's becoming more apparent how important the trio of Kobe Walker, Zach Kaiser, and Tucker Scannelbury are to Lloyd Minster's success. It definitely comes down to that some nights, but I think, uh, I think it just comes down to having all, all four lines either chip in the puck or getting momentum for that next line. It seems like more often than not, we're looking at that line to get spark the plug or even get that set net goal or the tying goal, you know. A post-game kids skate certainly won't remove the sting of the Bobcats' fourth loss in five games. Nor will it remove the burden of knowing that Grand Prairie and Sherwood Park wins Monday mean the Cats' last five games of the season may be the most important of all. Just going to come down to sticking together as a team here and looking, looking in the mirror and doing your job. 
Well, it's huge, right? It's still in our hands, right? Like, you know, at least we got a point today. We're not, you know, that's a big thing, right? So we're uh, six behind uh, GP and three behind uh, Sherwood Park. So, you know, we got a few days to regroup and get ready for Friday night. Lance Phillips, New Cap Sports, Lloydminster.